Where's my jumper from? Uh, it's Gucci. No, it's my grandma's. I think she knitted it. It looked really wholesome. And the fact it was from my grandma, it's like a hug in it. My name is Will Gao. I'm an actor and a musician. This chair's wonky. As you can see, we're in a forest. Jessie is like three years old. How old are you? I give her like cheeky bits of cheese. I want to be her favorite. I don't know many different types of cheeses, but cheddar, yeah? Maybe if she's lucky, hammer bear? What's the squid? That's the squidgy one, isn't it? Yeah. This is her main stomping ground. We're in Croydon right now. It's my stomping ground as well. My mum's Chinese and my dad's English. And we grew up kind of in both cultures, in Chinese culture and also English culture. I was the oldest child with my little sister, who I'm also in a band with, and I work with very closely, and then my little brother as well. So my dad's English, and uh, he doesn't speak any Chinese. He doesn't really speak, yeah, he tried, but it uh, didn't work out. But my mum's Chinese, and she kind of grew up speaking to me in Chinese, so I kind of have a vocabulary. Mostly when she was angry at me, just like when, when she was getting annoyed, it would be in Chinese, so I know a lot of like, Rude and naughty words in Chinese. Bendan! Ben means silly egg. Ben my mum used to ben call Dan. me a Bendan a lot of the time. I went to an all boys school throughout my whole education and I just didn't feel like this sense of belonging that a lot of my friends felt. And I think that was like a really big part of my childhood. But now it's great because I, I'm in a place where I get to explore that a lot and I really get to like dissect why that is and, and, and why I was feeling like that. It actually clicked when I saw a play in London called The Great Wave. It was at the National Theatre and it was an all East Asian cast. And I had this overwhelming sense of inclusivity and I got to meet a couple of the actors afterwards, which was pretty cool. I feel the pressure of being one of few British East Asian actors who are leading industry, I guess, or being the most visible. So I feel that need to, to be able to, to speak about this issue and to be really honest about it. I didn't feel represented on screen. On television, especially in the UK, we have such an issue with representation. Only now I'm starting to see East Asian, British East Asian actors being represented in, in acting and in our industry in general. I think it's been really recent and we've, we've got a long way to go, but we're nowhere near where we need to get. So yeah. My dad was an actor, um, a true theatre actor, and a lot of his friends are in that kind of creative world and space. And I think uh, I looked up to my mum and dad's love of culture and, and art. Um, and I think that really influenced me growing up. And I think a couple of teachers at school as well. I think music and the world of theatre and, and performance are very linked together. My school was connected with a commercial boys choir. And so I spent four years doing a lot of opera, which is a really niche thing, but I, I learned a lot more about music. And it also, it gave me a great opportunity to practice acting because opera is very, very dramatic and, and intense. Beijing opera, like the, ah, like that stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really intense. I went to one in Beijing. It's like one hour of organized carnage. I remember performing in a Shakespeare opera, A Midsummer Night's Dream um, by Benjamin Britten. I was playing one of the fairies. I was 12 years old at the time. I just loved it so much. So I spent a few years doing that. And then my voice broke, I got fired. Um, but I still enjoyed music and I still enjoyed acting. Um, but I was forced to go back to school, which was shit. Good advice. My mum always said like, just keep at it. Like the school, I didn't like school. I didn't like homework. And my mum was like, just keep going because at, at some point you'll be able to come back. <laughs> it's really raining and um, realise that the hard work paid off, you know. Yeah. My mum and my dad, they cared a lot about my education and like what I was up to. But then when I was like, you know what, actually I want to be an actor, I want to I wanna be a musician, I want to be creative. They were pretty supportive of it actually, I was blessed in that respect. the scariest moment of my life. You're just rushed out and suddenly there's a camera like, boom, and I forgot my line completely. You've got a lot of people around. Got used to it though. Two months after Hearts of came out, I was walking down the street and there's a group of young girls and one of them like broke down crying, like kind of seeing me and then I think they'd just seen the show. It had such a profound impact on so many people and it really helped people discover themselves and realize that they had a, a place and a group that they were accepted into. 
I think the great thing about having an ensemble cast and a cast of, I mean, we're all the same age, right? We're all between the ages of like 17 and 22, 23. So we're all there to support each other. And I think it was such a huge moment for all of us. I remember giving many a call to, to some of my castmates to, to check in with them, see if they were okay. Life just turned up a notch, like the noise of life. And also the, the accelerator pedal was like, I realized at that moment it was like, oh, okay, things are, things are different now. We did have a Snapchat group, but some of us deleted Snapchat and we just don't use it anymore. Sebastian Croft, I had a, a long ass street with him. That ended when I deleted Snapchat. I learned a lot about the history of the LGBT community. I explored Stonewall and gay rights movement and how little there actually has been. And it was really empowering to be part of that show because like this show is like the first um, show that's really celebrating it and not just using it as some like negative spin-off. I did a bit of modeling for a bit. I was like in East Croydon station, as you do. And this lady came up to me and she was like, Will, what's your name? I was like, Will, and she kind of scouted me. I thought it was like a scam, but it turned out it was legit. I had some crazy stories from it. Like fashion show after parties are, they're, they're nuts, underage. I've gone to Beijing quite a few times in my life because um, my grandparents are there and a lot of my family are there. Stay with my grandma, Lao Lao, in the outskirts of Beijing and just stay there with her. She'd cook many a meal. Don't know what I'd bring from Croydon to Beijing. Beijing to London, I'd love to bring those stools with like hot peanuts and like snacks and traditional Chinese pancakes. I think it's the breakfast food there, like bao buns and like bao zi. I remember every time we'd get there, like in the morning, my grandma would prepare them like fresh from the market. I think Croydon could do with some of those. Chinese food is just the vibe. When I was growing up, my mum cooked mainly just because of the food. Um, my dad's knowledge of cooking, like he had like one recipe book. <laughs> he had the Delia Smith cookbook and uh, he followed that like religion. Whereas my mum kind of improvised and you know, she had that um, training from, passed down from like grandparents, great grandparents. I can't handle spicy food. I literally can't handle it. I'm a, I'm a shame to my mum. Introducing, oh, my sister's not here. Me and Olivia, who's my wonderful and very talented sister, um, started a band called Wager Project in 2018. But then it kind of started to build and we started doing shows and we released an EP that did really well. And then we've kind of been thrown into this kind of chaos of releasing music and being in the studio and, and going to gigs. And it's been really, really fun. Most songs now, we both do together. Like I'll bring an idea, she'll develop it. We'll sit in a room, talk about it. And then when we produce it, obviously we're there together, um, arguing, but healthy, healthy arguing. Also songwriting is such a vulnerable thing. I think, especially at times where I've been quite low or written songs that are quite sad um, and vice versa for her. We've been uncomfortable to share it, um, but we know exactly what the vibe is. Like we will turn, the face away from each other and like it's, it's really sweet. ABBA and Queen and like the Beatles were like an underscore for my whole childhood and me and my sister there's so many home movies of just us like dancing to like ABBA and just hearing these sounds that made me want to move and, and perform. I think my dad played more ABBA and he played the Beatles, a lot of the Beatles and Frank Sinatra and then my mum played like a lot of Bee Gees, a lot of Carpenters and they're a big influence now for me and my sister because obviously the Carpenters were siblings as well. It's such a, a privilege to say that I literally get to make music with my sister for a living. It's just mad. I think I'm quite a frantic person, especially for four gigs. I'm quite nervous and I'm high energy and frantic and she's really chilled. She's collected and she's calm and she's like yin and yang. The idea comes from scratch. When you're writing a song, it com comes from nothing. Or it comes from an emotion, feeling like sadness or happiness and, or love or friendship. And you, you attach them. It's such a raw kind of craft. Whereas with acting, I think you're bringing, you're finding the emotion within a piece of writing. That's the biggest difference. There are challenges like everywhere you go. But for me, um, with acting in music, believing in myself was a big thing, yeah. Mitski is an artist that is just so interesting in the just everything she's she's been doing. Um, dream collab, be with Mitski. 
So if Miss Key's seeing this, please. <laughs> I saw her live at the roundhouse um, and she is just insane. Just the whole sound world she's created is like just such a fusion. It's like, it's a love letter to like 1980s Japan, but it's also just through like the lens of modern day pop, which is um, just so inspiring for, for me and Olivia. I just kind of try and stay disconnected from social media. I try and stay in real life as I possibly can. But TikTok is becoming a very broad platform now. And I think it's not just TikTok dancers. There's so many people doing so many different things. Um, so I actually think I need to embrace TikTok more than I have been. Not doing TikTok dances, because that would be very embarrassing and I wouldn't want to do that. My dancing will never be seen. Like, you, yeah, that's not, that, that can't happen. No one can see my, yeah. I think I'm going to stick with the, the music and the acting as the main as the main thing. I want to like fuse my two kind of worlds into one and explore like projects that incorporate both. Jessie was born three years ago. She was a tiny puppy, and we called her Jessie because I think I can't remember. We just called her Jessie, and then. I just remember walking her lots and caring for her. And yeah, I really like Jessie. But she does literally the stinkiest poos. Like, it's actually, you saw it today, right? You saw today the poos. Like, it was literally abysmal. I hope this doesn't make the final cut. But yeah, I love you, Jessie. See you soon.